Hi, good morning again. First of all, I'd like to apologize because it was brought to me that the previous video is actually only 720p resolution. And as a result, some of the stuff was a little bit hard to read. Um, I don't know why that happened, because it's supposed to record in 1080p, so hopefully this has been fixed now and you can see everything I'm doing, really. So in the previous videos we have checked out the lab, we've done some prerequisites on the Windows servers, and we also set up the NSX load balancers, and then of course we also had a look at the infrastructure design. So this is now part 5, we're finally going to do the VRA distributed install. Um, so essentially that is it, so we're using the wizard. We have already had a look at the individual components and where we will place those components. And let's get started. Right, so we're back in the lab. Um, there's one thing I mentioned um, in the previous video is that I only had site A, so you can see I have now a site B as well. It's essentially identical apart from the NSX components, so we still have a another virtual center, which is VCSAB01, and then we have the hosts. These hosts only have 12 gig of RAM rather than 16 gig because they don't run any NSX component just yet. So again, I'm going to have a look at it once we actually get there. Um, so let's just get started. So in order to actually get started with the installation itself, we're going to log into the first VRA appliance. You log in as root and you type in your root password. There's one thing to mention is once you lock in the very first time, it will start the installation wizard. Um, if the installation wizard times out, you can just re-log in again, and it would just essentially continue where you left off. Potentially the, the screen previous to that, so, but you can see that um, essentially it has green tick boxes at which step you've been, so you can just navigate easily. If you cancel the installation wizard, it won't come back on. Um, I'm not sure if there is a way in 7.3 to turn it back on. In previous versions, there was a command you could run via SSH to refire up the wizard. But let's just do it, and I mean, there's no reason to cancel it. So, as it says, welcome to the VRS automation wizard. We're just going to hit next. Yes, of course, we read all of it, don't we? We always do, blah, blah, blah. Right, so we do an enterprise deployment and we also install infrastructure as a service. If you don't take this or if you untick that, you will need to essentially reinstall or install the individual components manually. As you can see, the diagram here on the side should look familiar to what we've done before or what you've seen in the previous video. That the next, the first thing to do is here. So there are, there are two things we have to do here. Is once we have to install the management agent on the IIS hosts. Um, this is the agent used to configure the prerequisites to install IIS and do all these other funny things. First thing though, I'm gonna configure a NTP server. So this is pool.ntp.org. Another one, .dk.pool.ntp.org, and hit the change time settings, and that should come up green. That has been successfully done. So, and the t current time 9:37 a.m. UTC, so Greenwich Mean Time. You can see on my clock here is 10:38, so that's okay. Um, right. Under discovers, discovered hosts, you can see there are no configured hosts. That is because we need this particular agent. Yeah. So you download this agent to every single IAAS server. What you can do is you could just copy the link address 
and in your IIS servers, you essentially just paste it and that is the install location. So you can see if you hit that, it will download straight away. There we go. And then you install it on the individual IIS servers. I have already downloaded the agent on all the individual servers. Um, I haven't installed it yet, so I'm going to do that now. Um, again, we said we're going to use the service account. So we're going to log in using the service account. There we go, wait for the login to finish. There we go. Cancel all that. So I said already downloaded the agent to every single IS host. So I'm just gonna run through the first one. And then I'm probably just gonna cancel the recording. So we don't have to watch all that. Let's see. So the first thing to put in is the VRA appliance address. So that includes HTTPS and the administration port, which is 5480. Uh, 54 you type in the root username. You probably remember we did have obviously set up the load balancer, but we use the just the individual the first host because obviously we haven't load balanced the port 5480. So we're just gonna use the first host available. You load the certificate, that's the certificate running on 5480. Click next. Service account credentials. And this also tests whether you actually have the right conditions or the right um, permissions to do the installation. It will tell you you don't have local admin rights or you don't have um, no, run as a service rights. But if you wouldn't have local admin rights, you probably wouldn't be able to run the installer anyway. What it doesn't tell you is that you don't that UAC is enabled or disabled. So you can see what I was talking about when you log in as a local admin, you don't necessarily get the option to run this as an as an administrator for some reason. Maybe it's a 2016 thing. I honestly don't know. I'm not responding. I love Windows. Anyway, let's go back to the appliance. So you can see the first host is now in here so that is good and now we essentially do the other ones and I'm gonna as I say I'm gonna pause the video now and then we're just gonna have a look and yeah I'll see you in a second hello and we are back so you can see now I have the agents on all six servers so we have Web01, Web02 Mano 1, Mano 2, AGT 01, AGT 02. They're all connected within the last few seconds. Time offset, very important. That means the time isn't really out on either of them. Minus 1, okay, fair enough. It's just the one second. But at least they're all pretty much in sync. So we go next. Here we add our second appliance. So we already prepared the second one. So this is now just the credentials of the second one yeah so we're on vra01 and we're adding the second one into it accept the certificate so now we distribute the roles um so as i said as the as part of the design we have those two web servers which is the first web and the second web. The manager server, so these are the two manager servers, and then we have the two distribution execution manager, and as mentioned these are the workers. The orchestrator is being installed with the manager service, and apart from, and according to the design we've done, or I've done, the agent will have also the done um, the them worker on it. So we have the initial web server, web01, other webs, web02, manager servers, 
Manal 1 and Manal 2 and the Desk Distribution Execution Manager worker on AGT01, AGT02 and the same with the agent. And that's it. Next. So this runs now the check for the prerequisite. So we're going to hit run. The agent we just installed will now essentially check which roles have been installed and which haven't. Um, I'm pretty sure all of them will fail simply because these are, as mentioned, these are individual servers. Free server, uh, not individual, yeah, individual servers, of course, but they're also pretty much vanilla. So nothing else has been installed on them. We're just going to wait for it to finish off, essentially. In previous versions, you had to do the prerequisites yourself. I mean, you, you could get a PowerShell script to do that, but you didn't have the option to just fix it. So let's have a look. So for example, you can see IS, IIS hasn't been installed, etc., etc. Um, some stuff is already the minimum requirement of RAM, etc., etc. That is, has been all done. So all of these things is already done. Okay, secondary servers, etc., etc. Obviously, the prereqs depend on what role you want to install on it. So all of that is already kind of known that it will fail. So we hit now fix. So what it now does is in the background is essentially the agent will install all the prerequisites like IIS, um, start or secondary logon service if required, etc. etc. So that's done all by the agent. And that can actually take a while to be honest. You could log into a server and actually see the process running so you can see Okay, Mano one is already done, Agent01, so it, it, it fixed the MTD, MSTTC, even though settings were already correct. It fixed the firewall, secondary lock on servers, it done that. The web service now will obviously take a while to install because it's installing the IIS rules, etc. So I will pause this now and then We'll come back once those servers have been rebooted. See you in a minute. Hi, welcome back. So as you can see, the installation has been done and the restart has been done. Bar one. So I'm just gonna have a look and there we go. What actually happens with this one is, well, there's a Windows update pending. So that is essentially why it's not running as well. So we're just going to have to wait a little bit longer, essentially, for the installation or for the reboot to finish, and then we can proceed. So again, I'll keep an eye on it, and I'll see you in a minute. Right, hello again. So the server finally rebooted. Um, so whilst we know in theory that all the prerequisites have been met, we're still going to have to run the checker once more. And then we're going to expect to essentially see a green for all of them. So we're just going to wait for this to finish now. That hopefully shouldn't take too long. That's Mano 1 done. The web service probably will take a little bit longer. So once more, I'm going to pause this. Unfortunately, through the process of the installation, we will probably pause this a few, quite a few times because some processes take a while. Although while I was jibber-jabbering, you can see most of it has already been finished, so we may as well wait for AGT02 now to finish. And once that's okay, we can continue. There we go. So all servers have the prereqs installed, have been rebooted, and hit next. 
so now this is the load balancer. Um, as I said, we have two individual nodes, VRA01, VRA02, and I just called the load balancer vra.co.uk. I'm just gonna make sure again I can actually I can actually ping it. I mean it should be alright, but we never know what happened since yesterday. There we go, and the church return is 14. All good. So we hit next. System administrator, this would be administrator at vsphere.local. Gonna hit put a secure password, hit next. Again, these are the VIPs we had. So we had is-web.vgain.co.uk in this case. And once more, I just want to make sure I can ping this. Yeah, that is still working. And the manager service was iisman.vgain.co.uk. And once more, I'm gonna make sure I can ping it and it's available, yes. Passphrase, so it's just used for the encryption. Oops, typed something wrong. I don't think I've ever had to use it again after the installation, to be honest. Okay, that's that. SQL Server. So very cunningly, vra.co.uk, uh, sql.vegan.co.uk. And as mentioned, the service account I've been using has server or sysadmin credentials. So I'm creating a new database. I don't want to use SSL. And I don't want to check any advanced configuration. There's a little validate button. I mean, you can just press next. Um, Always keep an eye on that validate button because it will not stop you to click next if you don't validate the settings beforehand. So it's always worth doing. Otherwise, you might end up in a situation where the installation actually fails. And the last thing you want is sitting there for two hours waiting for the installation to finish just to find out there was a SQL misconfiguration, for example. So you can see I have ticked here or left the tick uh, the Windows authentication. That is because, again, I'm using the service.vra service account. All parameters are valid. That's great. So we hit next. I don't change anything here in terms of the default website. And I'm using my service account as well for the website. Let's copy paste this. Okay. But of course, all that depends on your environment. Again, validate, important. That essentially checks whether the service account has actually the right permissions, etc., whether the website is set up correctly. So you may as well make sure all of that is actually working correctly. Validation, again, should not take much longer. If I do notice that things like that take a while, I'm just going to speed up the movie later on, or the video. Hopefully nearly there. Do, 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 do. It does say if the validation process takes more than five minutes, but doesn't. Next. Right. As we said before, the manager service are both active passive. And here we decide which one is actually the active. I'm going for my first one. 
So IS min 01 is going to be my active one, and your passive one is going to be this one. Again, hit validate. So I mentioned in the previous screen, this if it takes more than five minutes. There might be something dodgy. It should be okay. And also don't click next while the validation takes place because it also says moving to another page will cancel the current validation. So we just have to gonna sit this one out, uh, sit this one on, wait, wait, wait. As people say, in IT, you mainly work in a progress by department, right? <laughs> All good, hit next. So the, I just always keep them up, copy, paste, essentially my credentials. As mentioned before, this is the dem worker. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna worker one, worker two. That should be it. It's just any name. Essentially, the instance name makes it easier to check your services. So if you would log in to the AGT01, the service will have the name in it, but also within vRealize Automation, so once you actually log in and you go to the monitoring page, this is also the name which shows up. So it's obviously up to you. You could give the instance name, obviously also the name of the actual host, so it might be easier for you to find out what is what. But to be honest, for, for me, I, I know which one is what. In fact, sometimes I just create a DNS record so I can find it if the naming convention needs to be like that. But again, it's all semantics, really. There we go. Agents. So this is, this is important now to remember these names. So the agent name, again, I'm just gonna, oops, I guess not, the service.vra, I'm just gonna copy paste again. Right, the endpoint name is important. So that the agent name, again, it shows up under the services, and the endpoint name is what you need later on for the VRA configuration. So first of all, HT01, vSphere, HT02, vSphere, it's all good. And we're just gonna call it, that's for the first cluster we have. So we're gonna install VCA A01, .uk. So that's my endpoint name. For high availability, the agent goes to both servers. The endpoint name, I'm just gonna call it VCSA A01. Actually, I'm just gonna give it the same name, really. Um, so again, this is this is the endpoint name. So you need to remember this particular name because when you configure your endpoints, which is another part of the series, if you configure your endpoints in vRealize Automation, you do require these names, not the agent name, but the endpoint name. I already said earlier, I've created two uh, second cluster. So this is VCA B01, again, copy paste all this around, copy paste the agent name, I'm just gonna explain it again in a second, what I've done. Right, so again, we have host name two and one, one and two. Agent name is VCSA01, VCSA01 for high availability. I call the end name the exact same thing. 
which I will need to remember for the next time. And then I'm going to create, nearly made a mistake, the same hostname 1 and 2 for high availability, the second vCenter, vcsa b one and vcsa b one on both these. So we enter with essentially two endpoints later. One is called vcsa a one and vcsa b one and these will be low balanced or for high availability essentially between the two agent servers. And we hit validate. I hope this works because in the previous version, for some reason, I always had an error when I created a second agent through the wizard. I got for some reason a, a strange error. I don't know why. I'm just going to check again. So it's agent 02. First vCenter, first vCenter service account. Agent 01, first vCenter, first vCenter service account. 01, second vCenter, second vCenter service account. 02, second vCenter, second vCenter service account. So there shouldn't be a reason for it to fail. Not that I can see anyway. So just gonna again wait a while and if it doesn't finish soon, which it just did, so it should be all okay. We had next. Now certificates. I usually have my own Windows CA. Actually the reason I started my own CA was because I didn't want to have browser errors when it comes to uh, certificates. There's no need for me in the lab to have proper signed certificates. The problem with this now is that the browsers have mainly, I think it's actually all browsers, Firefox, Chrome, etc., that they have stopped accept accepting um, a Windows CA as a proper external CA. And as a result, you may still end up with your browser errors, essentially despite the being a proper certificate. And again, the maintenance, I just don't bother. But you will find, if you're interested how to do that, oops, I'm just gonna show you that on the website. So if you go to my website, open902.com, you could probably just search for certificate. Da, 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 da. Create an enterprise CI and issue certificates for VRA and other VMware products with examples. It's an older article, um, but it's still valid. The only change, and I'm going to scroll down to the actual part I'm talking about. So it explains to you how to set up a Windows CA and how to do that. There's just a one change which we need to do. SHA-1 is no longer supported. So have a look at the whatever solution you use for VMware. Make sure you don't use SHA-1. Go for SHA-512 or 256, whatever the solution is actually supported. Um, so this is a little bit outdated by now. I'll potentially make a new one. But there we go. So I'm using self signed certificates essentially. So hit safe generated certificate. Luckily certificate replacement has been made easier. You can now actually do that through the administration interface. That's it. Keep this existing. Just gonna make a copy paste of this. Next. Same thing for the web certificate, organization, IT, GB, or UK, or whatever that is. Hit save. And the manager certificate uses the same as the web, so that should use the same, or not. I guess I was wrong there. 
So it will use the same certificate if it's on the same server, actually. But we're obviously using a different server. So it makes sense. So if you have manager service and the web certificate on the and the web server on the same physical server or virtual machine, it will just use the same certificate. Okay, next, log balances. Now that is exactly what I was been talking about at the beginning in the video of the NSX load balancer configuration. This is the point where we would now have to revert the actual configuration. As it says during the installation process, only DBRF nodes should be added to load balancer, health monitors should be disabled. And as you remember, that's exactly what we've done within the pool. We went in there, disabled VRA02, Web02, and MAN02, and disabled the web monitor to none, essentially. That's what we've done. So we go next. Hit one more validate. So I'm going to pause this because that can take a few minutes. And I'll see you in a second. And we're back. So the validation was all successful. That is good. So all prerequisites have been met, all the configuration sounds good. Next. That's important. Especially if you have a lot of virtual machines in your environment distributed. Um, in my case, six VMs, just Windows servers, you have your VRA appliances and so forth. Um, that could be tricky to rebuild essentially if something goes wrong. I mean there are ways of fixing the installation. Um, you will see this uh, on the next couple of pages but it is really worth to take a snapshot. I mean for even for my sake I just always do the same for the SQL box as well. Um, so yes I would say do your snapshots but don't forget to remove them again. And I'm going to do this now. I don't think you need to watch me creating snapshots. In fact, I usually use a PowerShell script, but now I've noticed I don't find the script. So I would have to write it again. So I just, uh, just finished installing PowerCLI. But yeah, I'm just going to uh, pause the movie now again. And I'll be back when the snapshots have been created. Okay, and back again. Right, so I've taken now snapshots of all the IS servers and also the automation appliances, but also for SQL, just in case. And go next. Right, this, yet another moment of me saying I'll come back to you, because this can potentially take an hour or two hours. So I've, I've seen it running for a few hours, depending on the environment, um, because obviously my home lab is just a single host and the storage and etc. So it might take a while. Um, but yeah, I'm going to hit install now. But as mentioned, I won't keep you waiting. So that, that will take a while now. Um, I will also show you when there, is a, when there is a mistake. So I'm not afraid to show that I made a mistake somewhere or there's a technical glitch or whatever because hey, you, you may end up having the same issue, you know, you never know. So, yeah, I'm going to pause the video now, and once there is a status to report, whether it's a finish or failed or whatever, I'll be back. See you then. Right, welcome back. Um, Actually, everything went smoothly, so there aren't actually any problems whatsoever. Sometimes some components, on, especially in web, fail, etc. But you can then say, essentially, here you can see the button retry failed. But yeah, it all went smoothly. It just about took in exact, well, not just about, but it took 58 minutes. So let's go ahead with the next step. So we need a license key. Yeah, why not? Next. Here I don't configure the initial content. I'm just going to go continue. 
the initial content would essentially create um, a um, like a workflow for uh, I think it's a XAS blueprint to do some initial configuration etc and it creates an admin called configuration admin but we do all this manually so we're just gonna go next and create our local admin later okay so that's about it for the installation um, so at this stage we're gonna have to re-enable the firewall at the firewall sorry the load balancer so you can see Again, this is how we set up the NSX Edge devices. So I'm just going to do that now while we're here, because this is essentially part of the installation. So it's done. Let's go to Networking and Security, NSX Edges. OK, here's our Edge. Let's configure the edge. Go back to load balancing. Go back to our pools. IIS web pool first. So the monitor again is IIS web and we disable the second mode. And again, conveniently, the one you save drops to the bottom. So you just keep clicking at it to do the current ones. That's IS Manager Pool. So it's IS Manager. Second one, Enable. OK. OK. VRA Web Pool is the next one. So that's the VRY web, enable the second one, enable, okay, okay. And there we go, VRY web console is again VRY web, and enable the second one, enable, enable, go, go. That's that. Let's check the pools. All the pools are up. That now means that because we have put the HTTPS health monitors back in, they're clearly working as as, um, as expected. So the responses we expect are exactly what we want. Uh, it's already gone. Um, so yeah, that is the installation and the next thing would be to do essentially or to actually start the configuration I'm just going to show you if you go to the VIP of VRA yes 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 it forwards to the actual home page again we don't necessarily know which one it's going to so it's good VRA automation cons console and that is it. We have now the installation. Maybe just for the fun of it, I'm gonna log in so you can see it. Uh, ah, it's already going into vsv.local. You can see at the bottom, so it's already on vsv.local. So I don't need to add vsv.local to the actual domain. But there we are. VRA 7.3, it's installed, all good. And as I mentioned in part six, we're gonna do the initial configuration. And then obviously there are gonna be more parts. We, we go into the blueprints and fabrics and all sorts. So stay with me um, and I hope to see you soon again. Thank you.